Hello and welcome to another episode of It Came From The Page. And uh, yes, you read that title right. These are 75 books that I want to read in 2024. Now, did I succeed at my 23 in 2023? Not at all. So you might ask, so why are you doing this? And I say, well, seems kind of fun. <laughs> So I am separating these into three categories. So this is uh, the first chunk, and the first chunk will be all of the novelizations and tie-ins that I want to read by the end of 2024. So I failed on my Read What You Own challenge, and I think one of the things was I didn't really plan for it. So this is me planning, and in, uh, in January I'm going to try again. So let's get through this quite quick. So this is the this is the Predator Dark Horse comic book adaptation. I do not like the comic this is based off of. Moose, this, you're making this really hard. Butterfly in the sky. So that's the third one and the last one. Uh, so I've just about read every Predator book ever, and that's one of them. There is a series of the Alien uh, books that are uh, adaptations of the Dark Horse comics. I've really liked what I've been reading so far. In April, I want to make a big video all about the best alien books, and these are some of my biggest blind spots. So get through these guys. This is the last in the uh, the Dark Horse Publishing specific Predator books that I have not read. I hear it's terrible, but that actually kind of makes me more excited to get into it. And uh, I know Kel I, I sent an extra copy of this I had to Kelsey, so uh, I'm going to convince her to buy read this with me. <laughs> Next up, I have not actually read any of the Alien novelizations, which is kind of cray-cray. Um, so yeah, I got to read those before I do that video in April. These are the Alien vs. Predator tie-in books from Dark Horse, the adaptations of those comics. Except for this one. This is the only original one. Uh, the other two are adaptations of a comic. This is a prequel novel to the first Underworld movie. I don't know. Seems kind of funny and silly. So I'm excited about that. I love Clash of the Titans, so I want to read the novelization for that. The novelization for Prophecy, Giant Killer Bear movie, of course. So these are some Resident Evil books I want to read, but I need to read them in order because I kind of... Oh my god. But I need to read them in order because I started this one um, and... I cl it clearly is referencing things that happened in this one, so I need to read this one. Uh, and then Resident Evil Zero as well, so I want to get those first three out and read. I want to read the novelization for Jaws of Revenge, because it's supposed to be super de duper silly, and uh, I am very excited for it. I want to read the novelization for Videodrome, because I love that movie. And I don't know how it would adapt, so excited to read that. Also, it's just beautiful. And yeah, this is a rare one and very expensive online, so I gotta be careful when I read that one. The Dragon Slayer novel. I really like Dragon Slayer, so I wanna read that. The novelization for Grizzly, another movie I love, so I gotta read the novelization, of course. The Thing novelization. I started reading this last year, I really liked it, so I'm hoping in January or something I'll get to this. And last, for, but certainly not least from this pile, is the Wishmaster novelization. So I love Wishmaster, and I'm excited for that. Oh no! Okay, so now moving on to horror. So these are 25 horror books that I would like to read in 2024, 2024. Oh my god, years are weird. Starting off with this, The Sorority uh, by Tamara Thorne. I kind of think this is kind of like a slasher villain set in a sorority house. I don't know, it sounds really interesting. I've never heard anyone talk about that one. Brian Keene, The Conqueror Worms. I don't really like Brian Keene that much, but I want to see, figure out if, the, you know, maybe I will like him more when he's writing kaiju stuff. I don't know. Death Dream. I've talked about this one a few times. I just keep putting it off. Really want to read that one. The Black Horde. This is an animal attack book uh, featuring, I believe, giant killer centipedes in the Alps. Hell yeah. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh my god that cat next up is tricycle and then where did i get this from huh romero was right he was so i don't know where that came from though uh next up so 
Tricycle, that one is mainly because of the cover. And then also, uh, Alex the Bookubus recently said some cool things about that one. So this is a book by a, an author who I read her work in an anthology, and I thought it was really, really good, so I uh, went to seek it out. And this is Adele Abyss line, and this is Anthony Shriek. So I'm really interested in reading this one. Blight, Evil Killer Moths, and it looks like some gross shit is on here. Ugh, gross. I've never read a Melody 10 book, so I'm going to read one of those. The Deceiver. This cat, I swear to God, she just keeps wanting to go on the books. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> why you want to do that? Stay dear. Next up, I've never read any V.C. Andrews, but I own quite a bit of them, so I want to start with Flowers in the Attic to see if that is anything that I would even remotely be interested in. No! <laughs> no! No! I'm going to kick you out. I'm sorry, girl. You keep going on the books. Sorry about that interruption. Uh, <laughs> Spawn of Hell by William Scholl. I just love that cover. It sounds cool. This one, I, I this might be literary fiction. I don't know anything about this other than I bought it because I know Amy from Amy Noel Reads loves it. It's one of her favorite books. So I uh, found it and I bought it a little bit. So this is the My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Moshfag. This might just be literary fiction, but I don't know. It's here. I want to read it, so that's important. Next up, there are some zombie books, because I want to get into some zombie stuff this year. So this is Tortures of the Damned by Hunter Shea. I believe this is a zombie book. I've not read any Hunter Shea, so I really need to do that. Blood Feud by Sam Siciliano. Uh, it's two vampires feuding, and I'm like, yeah, vampies, you go on your fighties. Uh, they Thirst by Robbie McKamey. I know people uh, don't like this book as much as other Robert McCammon books, but I am a sucker for vampires, so I'm going to at least try this. We'll see. We'll see. The Grave by Charles L. Grant. I like Charles L. Grant quite a bit uh, in his like short fiction work, so I'm really interested to kind of dive into his actual books, and I've owned this for a while, so can't wait to do that. Jack Ketchum. I have not read many Jack Ketchum books. I think I've only read uh, The Girl Next Door, so I'm going to start with Off Season. I know this is one Kelsey from Simon Slasher's Loves. Uh, another author who I've only read short fiction from is uh, Ramsey Campbell. I'm excited to finally get into this. Uh, I've heard this is like a pretty good serial killer thriller-esque book, so I'm interested in that. The Count of Eleven! Headhunter by Michael Slade. A terrifying new novel. This is another very famous paperback from hell. And I've been reading to, to read it for ages. Because it's also set in Canada. And it's very Canada focused. And it's like part of a big series. So I own a few books from this series. So I'm excited to see if they suck or not. Berserker. This is uh, a book about a giant killer uh, Norseman. Who comes back to life as a giant I believe. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And, it, like, hanging out in New York. Another zombie novel. This is The Book of the Undead, number one. So I have to figure out if I want to find the other two, because they're not cheap. So <laughs> I thought I would read this. This is a short story collection edited by Charles L. Grant. And I love Charles L. Grant, so I'm really excited to get to this. Turtles, pick one and die, bitch. Oh, the skelly is coming to get you. Beast Nights by Chelsea Quinn Yarborough. I've only read Chelsea Quinn Yarborough short stories, have never read a full book by her, so I'm really excited to get into that. Oh, oh my god, it's slime! If only there was a book also called Slashers, but uh, no, it's just slime. And uh, that's a very booby, booby cover, but this is, I just found this in a thrift store. And I was like, I'm in Canada. I don't know how this like very weird uh, British cover of slime made it here, but... I don't know if I'm going to get demonetized for that one, but hey, that's for you smuts katiras out there. The Jade Scorpion by Jay Halpern. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> this is a book that does actually feature a giant killer unicorn at the end. Why do I call it the Jade Scorpion, by the way? It's a Jade Unicorn. Anyways, because uh, I, I found this at a thrift store, and I was like, you know what? This is a cop-out, right? There's no way there's actually a Jade Unicorn in this. So, like, I flipped to the very end of the book, and oh, yeah, there's a giant uni there's a unicorn that's taking people out. So I was like, all right, I'll buy this and read the rest of it. Never heard anyone talk about this. The Shinglo 
This is a book about the horrors of Vietnam with a demon in there. So yeah, these are my horror book picks, my 25. And actually, I'm going to add another 50 because I'm going to do my 25 trash to end it out. So let's go. Oh my god, uh, sci-fi fantasy books are wildly unwieldable. And also, this is the most unrealistic pile of them all. But these are 25 sci-fi and fantasy books that I want to get to. Uh, there's no fucking way, but well, let's go through this. Uh, so this one is The Black Company by Glenn Cook. No idea what this is about, but I don't know, it's a man with armor, he's stabbing a thing, and he's got a pentacle, and I'm like, oh, that seems cool. I like them pentacles. Uh, The City of Ravens. I don't know, I, I, like, I, I just thought it was cool that these guys were having a sword fight by a bunch of ravens. It's like, whoa, never more, bitch. Uh, Luthien's Gamble by Arde Salvatore. This is like a cool looking sword fighty book. And I've read a few other R.A. Salvatore books and I quite enjoyed them. So I was like, why not? Time wars, bitch. Not a normal war is a time war. A short story about people fighting in different time periods with just a magical robot mans. That, this looks cool. Oh, it's a Florhammer novel about the flesh devils. They're tearing the flesh off of their enemies. Oh, I got a big sword. I'm going to stab you with it. Dwarves. What's the deal with dwarves? And why do they got a book that's so big? What's the deal, dwarves? What's the deal with dwarves? Empire of the Vampire. I know nothing about this book other than it was in a little free library. And it's like a fantasy book, but with a vampire without a shirt. And, you know, in the long tradition of vampires, they really do not like shirts. So, maybe this will explain why. Here's another weird one. Mike Rednick Santiago, A Myth of the Far Future. I don't know what that myth is, but I probably will read it. Dragonfly, bitch. And McCaffrey, the original Fourth Wing. I haven't read Fourth Wing or this book, so I have no idea. But the dragon riders are pern. They're riding dragons, so... Look at that. She's around that dragon. You go, girl. You you lead that weird-looking dragon into victory. I've always heard about that book, but I've never read it. Obviously, it's why it's here. Clive Barker's Error Rat. Weird fantasy from the mind of Clive Barker, like a normal-looking teenager, and... The fuck? <laughs> this is another book that I found at Little Free Library. The Dark Tide. One of the Dark... Oh, uh, the Iron Tower trilogy. You know, there's dark towers, there's iron towers, there's, you know, bronze towers. Emperor of Ancelon. I just like him because he's got a cool looking suit of armor, just got little glowy hands. Why does he got glowy hands? And he's a villain, so, you know, that's all I needed from life, is glowy hands and evil villainess. Vampire of the Mist by Christy Golden, which is a dark fantasy. It's kind of a fantasy and a horror, that's why I was here. Leave me alone. The Fuzzy Papers. Look at them. They're so cute. What's their deal? Is this about little Ewok stabbing people? You go. I hope this is good. I hope nothing bad ever happens to them. The Blackstone Fortress. A, uh, uh, this is actually three books, so <laughs> if I read even one of those, it counts. Um, Peter Straub is a talisman. Well, and also that whatever, Stevie, Stevie, whatever's his face. Uh, everyone was like, Andrew, you're being too mean to this. You must read the talisman in my king thing. So I guess I'm reading the talisman, bitch. Dinosaur lords. It's people who ride dinosaurs. Were you and any questions? None, because you're riding dinosaurs. That's cool. I want to know why. Night lords. This is an, a Warhammer book. Again, three books. If I even read one, it's going to count. <laughs> uh, this is a giant thing. I love Aaron Dembski Bowden. And the Night Lords are just the grimmest of grim darky darkness from Warhammer. So I can't wait to read that. It's a classic story. Speaking of classic stories about evil chaos space marines, Adam and the Omnibus by John French. Again, it's an omnibus of a bunch of books. If I even read one, it's counting. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Mike Brooks is one of my favorite authors in Warhammer today. And he wrote a book about this guy named Huron Blackheart. And it's like, why has he got a black heart? Is because it's like his temple looks like it's gonna going through some rough stuff? You need you need a doctor to look at your forehead, my man. Is that why you're angry? You got a lot of tubes. Are any of those tubes like happy tubes? I'll have to find out when I read Huron Blackheart, Master of the Maelstrom. Outgunned by Danny Flowers. Another Warhammer book. This is no surprise. A bunch of these will be Warhammer books, but that's my life, bitch. 
Uh, and this is all taking place in the sky. And the, one of my favorite books I read this year um, was um, a book, it was a Warhammer book that was like mainly taking place in the sky. So uh, I really want to read this because it sounds really cool and fun. And uh, yeah, I just like the way this looks, obviously. Corsican. This is just like a military sci-fi Warhammer stuff. So these are two books I'm looking to get into for Old School April because these are the very first Warhammer books like ever published. So Deathwing, which is the very first short story collection, and uh, the Inquisitor the Inquisitor War, which was a series of three books. We'll see how many of these I get to that are supposed to be very goofy and silly and don't that don't really match what Warhammer is today. But I want to kind of see where it all began. And uh, Gotrest and Felix, the first omnibus. Uh, and I was gifted by this for my birthday by Amory. She's already came up in this one. Now she's coming up twice. So yeah, I want to read at least one of those because, you know, they look like they're having a good time. You go, guys. So yeah, next up, and to end this, it will be 25 Trash. Oh no, she's so mad I kicked her out. She's wielding a sword. Oh, she's wielding a flail. She's going to kill me. Oh no, don't hit me. Don't use your evil powers. Oh no, she's trying to get me. Oh no. Oh no, Mooks, I'm sorry. I won't kick you out for the garbage portion. Please, put down the weapon. Please, please. Oh God. And to end the video, we will have 25 pieces of trash. Now, these won't all be Garbogist. There's Garbogist 1.5, to be fair, coming up. But um, I also kind of just want to read more like fun, trashy books like throughout the year. So these are some of the ones that I picked. Tic Tac 1. I can't imagine this is good because it looks like it's a men's adventure. Although it does say just adventure, so but there are men on the front. I don't know. I don't trust men when they're adventuring. Speaking of men I don't trust when they're adventuring, Mac Bolin. He's probably a bastard. Uh, Edge Meat Steel. I've wanted to read one of these for a while, and I've owned this for a while, but I just never get around to it, so I want to get around to this. Dawn of War 2, and uh, Dawn of War, the rest of the omnibus. I read the first one here, but I haven't read the other ones. Uh, these are both, like, very trashy video game tie-ins. That's why they're there versus being, you know, in with the, the tie-ins normally. Uh, speaking of a tie-in that's, like, very trashy, uh, Halloween, the Scream Factory. Oh, no, he's breaking into the Blu-ray place and killing all of your special features. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, that's a joke for, like, no one. Uh, the Dracula was a woman in search of the Blood Countess of Transylvania. So, yeah, this is very much like a trashy tie-in to... Uh, Raymond T. McNally was one of the authors for In Search of Dracula, so they kept making In Search of Random Ass Things, so I thought I'd read one of those. Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. This is a book that like I only own because it has a funny title, so now I need to read it and figure out if I can just get rid of it or not. This is a book that kind of looks cool because I like the snowness thing, but it feels like there's cops in it, so A cab. This is a really trashy tie-in to Rose Red. Like, this is a fake diary to prequel the Stephen King miniseries Rose Red. And, like, if that ain't trash, bitch, I don't know what is. Here's a little Spider-Man book. You are Spider-Man. I am Spider-Man. I can win a Spider-Man CD. Rome? Oh, my. He's really mad about it. He's like, I can't believe you're going to win a CD Rome or Spider-Man. I'm unhinged at this point. Well, not that I was ever hinged. I'm like this girl. Stop. Monster Makers Incorporated. Giant monsters. But they're actually toy versions. That sounds trashy. This one is here because it's got a terrible cover art. What is happening here? What? Wolverine. Wolverine, what is wrong with your face? Are you constipated? What is going on? He is just mad. He's mad because that, oh, that gun is weird looking. He's mad about that. And then Spider-Man's like, yo, look at me. I'm Tobey Maguire, bitch. Anyways. TNT. I'm a trashy men's adventure. End world. See, there's, these are books that I know I'm going to unhaul. Like, so when I say read, <laughs> I might start these books, unhaul them, and throw them into the Shadow Realm, but... You know, I'm putting them on here just because I plan to get to them. 
Miami grad because the worst amazing title in all of like fiction goes to Miami grad because it's like the Soviets take over Miami. Oh my God. What will we do? Oh my God. The Soviets are taking all of our beaches. Oh no. Oh no. So yeah, that's gotta be trash. I'm getting unhinged. I'm sorry. It's been, I've been getting this like for hours <laughs> trying to put this together. Look at this. It's a Shadowrun book. And uh, look at, why is, the, why is there a floating person firing lightning bolts? And why does this guy look like he's about to, like, go save the guys on Dune? Bitch looks like he's from, like, Dune. And then what's going on with these guys? Are they, like, robot stormtroopers? No one will ever know, except for me when I read the book. Communion, a true story by Whitney Schreiber. This is when uh, Whitney Schreiber writes about how many aliens he boned and then calls it a true story. I think. Columbo. One more thing, Columbo. Season's greetings from hell. It's a Christmas killing by Columbo. For the next Christmas season. Horn Hot Zone. Nope, that's not a smut title. It's a Robocop ripoff. And we all know how I think about cops. I own so many of these long arm books, so I really want to read one of these. So this is the long arm Lone Star crossover, and I have about four or five of these, so I really need to get to these. I think I will enjoy them. And I just love, like, I love these covers so much. They're so trashy goodness. Death Star, which is a Star Wars book, but it's here with this because I want to pair it with Hellstar, because the same author wrote Death Star and Hellstar, and I'm like, what's the deal? Watch the deal with your stars. So that's why those are there. Reba, I'm thinking about doing a public readathon, <laughs> maybe in like June, and call it Rebathon. Uh, if I do, <laughs> I will <laughs> read Reba, this Reba book as part of it. Are you, if you're this far of the video, are you into Rebathon? Let me know in the comments. And also, don't you remember the true story of Napoleon? There's this new Napoleon movie coming out. I'm like, where's the dinosaurs, bitch? Ridley Scott, there's something you forgot about Napoleon and him falling to defeat at Waterloo. All the goddamn dinosaurs. Look at them. Yeah, I had Napoleon. You know what? You are small compared to the giant dinosaur I'm riding, bitch. The real story. The real story. There's another one. What's it called? Clash of the Empire. Oh, damn. Napoleon's enemies. Oh, man. There's a whole bunch of Napoleon books. Napoleon just getting owned by the dinosaurs. They really should teach that. It's cool. Anyways, so those are all the books. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a giant spreadsheet. Well, it's a Google Doc. I'm going to make a giant Google Doc with all these on here. Uh, as I kind of edit this video and note down each book. And then as the year goes by, I'm going to try to at least get to, let's say, 35. If I can get to 35 of these by the end of the year, it will be an accomplishment. And I'm going to be kind of working to fit in into all the reading events I'm doing this year and just general thematic goodness. So I hope you enjoyed this video. What are you planning on reading? Uh, do you think I'm going to get to any of these books? Let me know. Coutoulou!